I was once told that if people don't talk about you, then you're less important to humanity. The reason fans would continue to talk about legendary icons like Vivian Lee. After her era of stage and screen performances, I still think Hollywood is yet to find her replica in the entertainment scene. But beyond the fame and talent, what are people talking about this beautiful and highly talented lady as regards her vivacious image and expressive sexual drive? Funnily enough, many now remember her with her sexual freestyling more than those of her unmatched legacy. Why Vivian Lee couldn't be satisfied in bed! Whether it is part of the historical gossip or a near-perfect assessment of the life and time of beautiful Vivian Lee, the fact remains that she was such a gem that would not be easily forgotten, not with her creative exploit in the industry. Vivian Lee has been auspiciously discussed as one of the most sexually liberated individuals you can think of in Hollywood. Some say it's a joke, perhaps taken too far, while others still think some of her activities point to the assertion. It does not matter the divide you find yourself in, in this age-long concern. The truth is that Vivian Lee may have created a hole for such a broken psyche. This somewhat offensive remark may have tainted the name and innate creativity of this fascinating lady for years. Of course, Vivian Lee had to live with the label. Even though it tends to suggest so, it does not mean she was truly addicted to sex. Expectedly, and very unfortunately too, Lee had issues that made her life miserable at a point in her life. She had to battle an enduring trauma of bipolar disorder, at a time very little was known about the illness. In the 1940s, no one ever discussed such a psychiatric condition, even as later findings suggest that she may have been downed with the mental condition long before she went through a demoralising miscarriage in 1945 which experts say triggered it to an alarming state. Who is Vivian Lee and why is she a lovable image in the international entertainment scene? Fact Check reveals that she is one of the best actresses of all time. I heard that she developed a near-photographic memory in her career as she would be at home with her lines after one or just two readings of a script. I also learned that Lee is the first British lady to win the Academy Award for Best Actress. The memory of Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind is still fresh. Of course, her connection with Shakespearean acting legend Laurence Olivier is tantamount to things of love and disaster. The famous Olivier was in a marriage with actress Jill Esmond when he first met Lee in 1936, after the talented Lee put up a wonderful performance on a London stage show. Their passion, however, was repressed until a year later, when the two co-starred in the British movie Fire Over England. With the on-screen chemistry, it was almost certain that the two were into each other. Expectedly, three years after that movie, they were married, after they tactically discarded their various ex-spouses through divorces. Not too long after, their combined creativity began to show, as we saw them perform in the extravagant Broadway production of Romeo and Juliet and Antony and Cleopatra on the West End. Their collaboration did not end on stage as they were seen in That Hamilton Woman, a British movie that became a huge success and highly popular with a relevant societal sentiment that critics say forced Winston Churchill to wine and dine with the couple. I heard that it had turned out to FDR as real propaganda was also propelled. The London audience would not forget how they crashed the theatre hall to see Vivian Lee act out the role of Blanche in the sizzling drama adaptation of A Streetcar Named Desire. The performance was captivating and the memory remains vivid as she solemnly and convincingly portrays a passionate and complex character. Her audiences were spellbound as they sat in awe, witnessing Lee's remarkable portrayal of a character with intense emotions and desires. Describing how sensual her act was, a play critic had written that Lee's perceived desire rolls off the stage like a tropical storm cloud, adding that it caused vague stirrings in old codgers far past their prime. Towards the final moment of the play, her audience is thrilled to a suspenseful end to see the eventual consequence thereof, as they watched the female lead that could not satisfy her explosive desire suffer a total mental collapse. 
I guess this is where the gossip might have emanated from as fans tried to compare Vivian Lee's real-life mental health issues years after to what they saw her do in the streetcar part, with many deducing more than one meaning thereof. Although that performance is not the only perceived indictment, her relationship with Olivia and issues that followed, coupled with her carefree personal life within the period, add together to what has already been tagged by commentators as the double life of Vivian Lee, not when opinions are high on how she appears unsatisfied in bed. Born Vivian Mary Hartley in 1913, somewhere in Darjeeling, India, Lee appeared destined to become an actress as she began reciting Little Bo Peep at the age of three for her mother's drama group. The earliest sign of what became known as a mental condition about Lee may have been noticed while she was at a convent school in London. She was just six years old when she joined the school, after which she enrolled in London's Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts as an adult. Historians have documented the opinions of classmates who thought Lee exhibited negligible signs of the condition early. The gossip about Lee's condition first appeared in the public space when she played Ophelia in Olivia's supposed Hamlet in an old Vic theatre production of 1937. The Ophelia character is still regarded among the best-known woman roles in the history of stage drama, even as Olivia was said to have been horrified within the period as he reportedly told cast members how he thought Lee had gone suddenly mad in her dressing room with the way she verbally abused him without any provocation. But what is the connection between her historic mental health condition and the drive for more and more action in bed? The first time I heard about this, I dismissed it with a wave of a hand, but as time goes on, and with more rhetoric coming from trusted sources, which were said to have experienced her unsatisfaction, I began to give more attention to the allegation. After she won her second Oscar with Tennessee Williams's character Blanche Dubois in a streetcar named Desire play, the sensual aspect of the actress gained prominence following the vulnerable and manic-like depressive mood swings that fans saw her do as she debuted in London's West End that year, appearing in 326 performances. Even at the peak of her fame in this drama, close associates and friends were baffled by how passionately she was hurling herself into the role. Thus, in gesticulation, voice and other ways, she was portraying the role of a tormented woman. Although gossip about Lee's personality issue took wider dimensions when information filtered in as what is now referred to as her adventurous trip to Paris, accompanied by playwright Terence Rattigan. While London's West End fans were busy talking about that one, gossip columnists did not lose track of how it all started when she was paired with the famous Laurence Olivier. Although Vivian Lee was a married mother of a cute little girl at the time, she was recklessly infatuated with Olivia's charm. It became a sizzling love scene at the backstage of Far Over England. Those who knew Vivian Lee then were a little worried about the affair, as they all knew that, if sufficiently aroused, she could do just anything to hang on to it, even at the expense of her stable life. And that was the case when she hurriedly divorced her husband and gave her only daughter a sobbing goodbye. These critics say is her first real-life drama, after which she threw herself into Olivia's excited arms. The future looked bright for the couple, even as Olivia got superstardom as England's greatest actor, with the remarkable production of Hamlet. Not too long after, his creativity earned him a knighthood, and Vivian Lee became Lady Olivia. But one of her undoings was the repulsive gossip in Piccadilly, suggesting that Lee was not representing well of a ladylike character. An even more troublesome rumour is the one that suggests that Sir Lawrence Olivier was keeping an eye on his lady love in a desperate attempt to curtail her excesses, among which is perhaps her rascality. The early sign of trouble for the couple came when Paramount Pictures offered them a co-starring role in Elephant Walk. Olivia instantly rejected the offer because he had an idea of the kind of roles he would do with her, but Vivian Lee countered his opinion by accepting to play the female lead in the movie. 
It was not clear why Lee had to rebel against her husband's wish, as the real intention remained in the balance until things unfolded, with some saying that it was a trick to stay out of sight of the probing eye of her husband, since the movie location is far away in Ceylon. Olivia would later approve of his close friend Peter Finch for a role in the movie, with the hope that he would keep an eye on his wife Vivian. Did Finch religiously carry out the extra duty bestowed on him by his friend? Dana Andrews, who stood in for Olivia in the co-starring position, was captured regularly with Lee as things looked normal. She appears happy, like someone just bent on having fun. But along the line, news filtered that Dana Andrews, her regular companion, was worried about her behaviour, that he advised she see a psychiatrist, to which she was quoted to have said, Psychiatrists cause more trouble than any other people. I don't believe in them. Peter Finch may have made a call that brought Sir Lawrence Olivier to the location, but with the drama that ensued it seems Lawrence had no better choice than to return home alone, while the entire crew with Lee returned to Hollywood, where the remaining part of the film was completed. But not too long rumours went around that while Lee was thought to be staying alone in a rented apartment, she was actually warming the bed of Olivia's trusted friend, Peter Finch, and spent most of her time with him. I'm not sure I could find the right word to say how this scandalous atmosphere played out, but it does not take away the fact that it happened. But that was not the end, because rumours continued and more facts began to emerge. A gossip columnist exposed another adulterous affair Vivian Lee was having with John Buckmaster. Reports have it that Buckmaster and Vivian spent hours together in the pretext that he was teaching her the mysteries of yoga. But something more was amidst. While that was still in the air, it became obvious to the studio crew that Vivian's real-life issues were becoming unbearable, with one psychiatric incident after another. Sooner Lee was reported to have hysterically collapsed on set, with a psychoanalyst confirming that she needed urgent attention. That was when her mental case went viral. She was subsequently replaced by Elizabeth Taylor, because there was no way she could have been allowed to continue with her role in Elephant Walk. She returned to England, where she performed a role in A Streetcar Named Desire, a role that subsequently destroyed her precious identity as Vivian Lee, and replaced it with an addicted woman. Expectedly, the gossip continued about her can't-get-enough-satisfaction attitude in bed. It was so funny that some liken her rampant behaviour to the type that she sleeps with just anyone. A highly respected lady within the Hollywood scene, Lee's legacy as the 16th greatest female star of the classic Hollywood cinema, according to the American Film Institute, is sure a fit that many are still grappling to understand. Unfortunately, fans are more concerned these days about her erratic private life. A lot has been said and heard of how Lee liked her loveliness but was afraid her bodily posture made her look like an unserious actress in the acting community. This school of thought likens this to why she could just go to bed anywhere and with anyone. Even though this is very unfair, a sort of misrepresentation of issues concerning this iconic talent, considering her established age-long mental condition. Lee, they say, is a star that's difficult to ascertain who and who she'd slept with through the course of her career, with many names popping up, one after the other. Was it also true that this is the primary reason David O. Selznick chose her, a relatively unknown British talent at the time in Gone with the Wind, against more prominent stars at his disposal? And whether those reports are true or not would be insignificant, bearing in mind that her case would have been a special one, owing to the same psychological condition that shrouded her personality. Expectedly, Vivian Lee was fingered for her appalling reputation of being difficult to work with, but some of us who followed her shows were glad none of that stopped her from consolidating her numerous awards and recognitions. Earlier, as a young starlet in England, Vivian Lee had married a lawyer, Herbert Lee Holman, a man thirteen years her senior, then she was just nineteen, and a year after her daughter Suzanne was born, all of that was left behind as she began seeking satisfaction, or so it seems. 
Her earliest romantic contact with Olivia was both passionate and erotic, as she was seen backstage passionately kissing the married actor and confessing her love for him. And reports say Olivia had to flee the room to avoid her, but Lee's charm was irresistible that he had to dance to her tune to begin a passionate and scandalous affair. I heard that Sir Lawrence would later admit that it was a burden to him trying to satisfy her sensual urge. Peter Finch, who benefited from her freestyling, thinks that sex was like a stimulant as strong and addictive as anything else for Lee, and described her unsatisfaction with it as a disease. It was more like a nightmare for Vivian Lee, as her true life story tends to correspond with the imaginary roles she played in the entertainment industry. Although she finally emerged victorious with the help of her loving husband, Sir Lawrence, who was devoted to love and affection, even in her darkest moments, until she died in 1967. Brace yourselves, for in our next video we unveil the captivating story of Anne Francis, the remarkable woman who conquered Hollywood as the female James Bond. Prepare to be spellbound by her wit, charm and undeniable allure.